It's day two of our seven day challenge. Hey friends, it's Kate here. Thanks so much for joining me today. Now, day two of our lovely workout to heal from burnout challenge is all about sleep. Some of us already struggle with sleep in general, so even if you're not doing the entire challenge, this might be a lovely class just for you. One of the most costly elements of burnout for me was a lack of sleep. Normally speaking, I am a very good sleeper and being so stressed out, overwhelmed, I had a really rough time sleeping. I could not shut off my brain. I was just constantly thinking about work and everything I needed to do. So learning some new ways to help calm me down made a really big difference. So I have six tips to help us unwind at the end of the night, six things that help me if I know that I'm struggling to fall asleep. First tip is take a hot shower before you go to bed. Now I've always done this, I've always been like an evening shower kind of person, I'm not a morning person, I do not want to have to get up early to take a shower. Really for me, making sure I take a really warm shower towards the end of my night really helps calm my nervous system down, it helps put me in a more relaxed state. Tip number two is making a set bedtime. Now, maybe it seems like a no-brainer, but I used to be one of those people, and I still sometimes am, um, where I wanna just veg out on my couch at the end of the day, wait until I'm sleepy, and then go lay in bed. However, I don't know about you, but when I do it that way, I pretty much wake myself up um, when I travel from my couch to my bed. I found it's made a big difference in my body and in my um, sleeping habits if I get into bed before I'm sleepy, so at a particular time, and then I can chill out there instead and simply fall asleep when I feel sleepy rather than having to get up and relocate to my bed. Now, number two is actually an eye mask. I feel kind of silly using these sometimes, but I'm really sensitive to light. I found using a nice eye mask can be really helpful in blocking out any of those lights around me. And they make ones, you know, that are kind of like concave to your eyes. Um, so it doesn't feel like it's smashing you or kind of pushing down into your eyelashes, which I don't like that feeling. That's one of my favorite things to really help tune everything out and get me saddled. Tip number four is a white noise machine. And I really just, it's not a whole machine. I just use an app on my phone um, to create white noise. Most of the time, the neighborhood I live in is nice and quiet, but every so often on a couple of days a week, there's a very large garbage truck that goes by and it's very loud and wakes me up. So I've made sure that if I put on a white noise um, app during that time it really helps just tune out the world and, and it helps keep me asleep once I am asleep. Number five is one that I really struggle with. I would love to tell you that I'm so good at this that I don't do it at all but despite all of the medical evidence out there saying that this is something that would make a big difference in your sleeping pattern I have yet to accomplish this goal but is to turn off um, screens at a certain time to be really good and dedicated and say I will not have any screens after X time that's one that I would love to be better at myself some days I can do it I will admit most of the days I can't I just want to scroll on my phone for a while at the end of the evening but a habit I am personally trying to work on and one that I would like to do for myself is to cut out screens at the end of my day which from all of my research is a fabulous way to help us sleep better and tip six is one of my favorites it's something I I do very frequently it's add a small meditation to the end of my evening once I'm in bed if I'm struggling to fall asleep I usually do a simple body scan or maybe a light mantra meditation something that can kind of help tune out those thoughts that start buzzing around in my head every little thing that you know you've been thinking about since fourth grade and you cannot get it out of your head like flies back in there so usually doing just a small little body scan makes such a big difference and really helps me fall asleep quite quickly. So I hope some of those tips were helpful for you. Maybe some of them we already do, you already know, you've heard them before. Maybe a few are new to you or you've just not thought to try them yourself. So hopefully, you know, that can give us a little helping hand. On to today's class. Now today's class is a yoga class that is meant to help us relax. Yesterday we had a lovely full body workout, amazing. Today we're gonna have a nice full body stretch. This is meant to do towards the end of your day so we can unwind and help us fall asleep. However, friends, we can always benefit from stretching so if you do it first thing, it's not like you're gonna fall asleep right afterwards. Roll out your mat, let's get started. Let's start standing with our fingertips dangling by our sides. 
Now, of course, this is about stretching, but let's make sure that we are activating our abdominal muscles. Wrap the tummy in, lift up and out of the waist. Imagine I'm holding your ears and I'm pulling your ears straight up to the sky. Take a big inhale and dip your chin down to your chest. Now feel like you're giving yourself a little bit of a double chin. Almost push the back of your head up as you pull your chin in a little deeper. And a few times I just want you to roll one ear to one shoulder and then bring chin back down to chest. Roll opposite ear to opposite shoulder. Bring chin back down to chest. Take that lovely little sway side to side at your own pace. And then bring your chin back down to chest. Pause. Bring your gaze upright. Roll your shoulders backwards three times. Make it the biggest, deepest shoulder you possibly can do. The bigger, steepest shoulder roll you can possibly do. Take it in the opposite direction. And I'm really trying to lift them up as high as I can and dip them as low as I can. Bring it into your elbows. Circle your elbows backwards. Make dinner plate size circles with your elbows. Opposite direction, other way. And then take it into your entire arm, circle them backwards. Three, two, one. Circle forwards, three, two, one hands lift highest, pause there, press down into your feet to lift your fingertips higher, take a big inhale. As you exhale, flip your palms, press them down by your sides, tuck your chin to your chest, bend the knees and slowly start to roll down. Allow your fingertips to dangle, pull your belly button up and in. Keep rolling all the way down to a deep forward fold. No, your knees do not have to be straight. You can keep them softly bent. Maybe look through the legs. Nod the head yes. Shake it no. And then pause. Bend the knees deeper. Soften the shoulders down the back. Roll all the way up to standing. One vertebra at a time. Stand tall, stand straight. Big inhale. Exhale again. Chin to chest. Bend the knees. Roll down. Fingertips are heavy, top of the head falls to the floor. This time sway the hips a little side to side, right and left. And then from here, we're simply going to come down to a small child's pose. Now, knees can be together or apart, but reach your hands away, let your forehead fall to the ground and relax for a moment. If this does not feel comfortable, of course we can modify for ourselves. but otherwise, allow your shoulder blades to fall away from one another. Your forehead to sink into the ground. Take a big inhale, big breath out, another big inhale, big breath out. One last time. Roll yourself up to a seat. Now, if kneeling does not feel good in our body, of course, we can come to a cross-legged seat instead, but otherwise, shoulders back, squeeze the inner thighs towards one another, lift out of your waist, take both hands high. Drop your right hand down to the ground, lift your left hand higher, and take a side stretch over to your right. Almost think about stacking the shoulders, one on top of the other. We're not looking down at the ground, we're looking forward. You might think about fanning open your ribs a little bit more. Take a nice big inhale. As you exhale, a big forward fold. Roll yourself up. Both hands lift high once more. Navel spine, ears lift high. Left hand down, right hand reaches. And then start to stretch over to your left. Again, stacking the shoulders, opening up across the body. Full big inhale. Big breath out, big forward fold. Roll yourself up to a nice tall seat and let's take our feet out in front of us and lie on our back. 
Now simply start with your feet a little wider than your hips and knock your knees together. Take your hands wide like a T. Now for me, when I knock my knees together, I immediately imprint the spine. My spine just naturally kind of falls down there. For those of us that feel like we have tight backs towards the end of the day, this can be such a simple pose to arrive in. Now, if you have more internal rotation or less than me, it's okay. We don't have to look exactly alike. But just feel your low back touch the mat, open up across the chest. And then heel toe the feet back in line with the hips. Reach your fingertips overhead and actively stretch. Now, I'm okay if you choose to arch the back or keep it connected to the ground, whatever feels better in your body. But stomp down into both of your feet and physically reach longer through your right side. Let that go. Stomp into your feet, reach longer through your left side. Let that go. Your hands can stay over your head or you can take them somewhere else, but we'll cross our right leg over our left in a simple figure four. Maybe move your hands off to the side and take a little sway of your figure four, right and left. That might be bigger than mine or smaller. Sometimes it feels really good to sway all the way over to the left, almost letting my right foot touch the ground. And then from here, you can pause, pull your left leg up. Now you might hug around the back of just your left leg, or you might take your right hand to your right thigh, externally rotating the right thigh as you pull your left leg a little bit closer. Everybody's bodies are different. If this is not in the cards for you today, it is a-okay. You could keep your left foot on the floor. It might feel good to extend the left leg long flexing the foot, getting a stretch to the back of the leg, maybe pointing the toe or rolling the ankle around, and eventually setting your foot on the floor, unraveling, placing the left foot on the knee. Again, you can take your hands to a T and maybe we'll start that little rock and roll side to side. And then eventually arrive center, again, pause. Do you wanna keep your right foot planted? Do you wanna lift it up? And again, both sides can be different. Maybe on this side, it simply feels wonderful to draw the entire right knee closer to your right shoulder. Maybe you wanna explore that external rotation, that turning out of your left leg. That often gets a little deeper into my glutes. And then whether or not you wanna straighten the leg, you can, you might, Point and flex, finding a deeper stretch to the back of the hamstrings, through your calf, and all that lovely mobility through our ankle. From here, pull both knees into your chest. Give yourself a little hug, little squeeze. Circle your knees away from one another. Circle your knees towards one another. And let's find a happy baby if we so choose. Now you've got two options. Maybe you want a little bit more gentle and just hold behind the thighs, pulling the knees almost down to the ground on the sides of your ribs. Or maybe you wanna reach for your pinky toes and find that happy baby there. Now, if you have to curl the head and chest up to accomplish that task of reaching for your toes, just hold behind your thighs. Remember, this should be gentle, nice and relaxing, we shouldn't feel like we're straining. You might sway again a little side to side here. And then I usually like to bring my feet together, knees apart. Everybody's different, you don't have to look quite like me. Take a nice big breath, big sigh out. Bring your knees together, pause, take a full big inhale, and as you exhale, let them fall to the right. Point your nose to the sky or look to your left side if you'd prefer a deeper twist. Big inhale. Big breath out. And then slowly roll to your back and twist to the opposite side. Again, we can point our nose to the sky or look away. 
Big inhale, big breath out. Unravel when you feel ready. Extend your legs long. Take your hands wherever feels best. Breathe in on one. Let go on two. Breath in on three. Release on four. In your own mind, continue to count all the way up to 10. Wiggle your toes, nod the head. Slowly roll to one side, pushing yourself up to a nice tall seat. Take a moment to notice if we feel a little more relaxed, a little well rested. And as always, my friend, I invite you to pat yourself on the back Thank yourself for doing something so good and just for you. Thank you for joining me for day two. As I mentioned, um, I will have a longer video that you can join in on if you need a little bit more. You can find that link up there. Or I will see you tomorrow for our day three.